Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever and wherever you're watching or listening. This is the Stochastic How to Bet the NHL Preview Pod. Of course, I am joined by our single entry DFS assassin, Mr. Joshua Harris. Josh, how are you doing today, buddy? Pretty good. I still have, you know, the Osmo swag. Uh, I don't know when we get the Stochastic. Uh, I apparently got lost in the mail with Jake's wedding invitation. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I guess my wedding invitations from our boss, Jake Harry, are still on the way as well. Uh, but we're not here to talk about his wedding, though I'm sure it was a lovely affair. We are here to talk about how to bet uh, the NHL throughout the season. We've already put up a betting pause. If you want to head on over to our Odd Shopper YouTube channel, we've already talked about. Uh, some of our favorite bets from the preseason, you know, uh, teams to make the playoffs, teams to miss the playoffs, team point totals, uh, some goal props from individual players, guys to win some awards. Uh, we've talked about a lot already. So head on over to the Odd Shopper uh, YouTube channel and go check out our uh, NHL 2022-23 preview video. We've also got some more videos upcoming um, right up until the start of the NHL season. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, how to play NHL DFS through the season. We're going to talk about how to use Fantasy Cruncher. So we've got some more stuff coming up uh, in the coming weeks, right up until puck drop for the NHL season, which I think is October 12th, um, two weeks from tomorrow. I mean, they're doing that that series over uh, in Czechia. So, you know, it starts a little bit earlier, but the real season, I think, starts October 12th. Might be the 11th. Probably should look into that. Um <laughs> But before we get too much further, please like and subscribe this video. Uh, they really do help us out. They show interest uh, in these and will help us uh, keep these videos coming, not only uh, in the preseason, but obviously throughout the regular season and right into the playoffs. Uh, talk talk to uh, your friends and let us know that we're around. Uh, we definitely don't mind chatting with new people in our YouTube chat when our shows are live. So be sure to tell everyone you know, come visit Stochastic, come talk to the NHL guys. And let's have ourselves a really good season. All right, Josh, we're here to talk about how to bet the NHL through the season. And I think the very first place we should start is Odd Shopper. Odd Shopper um, is a website where we can uh, shop lines across uh, legal sites uh, in the United States. Uh, I think the easiest way to do it is just to kind of show you guys uh, what we have. Um, this is Odd Shopper right here. So you can see this is for the NHL preseason. Um, you know, Detroit Red Wings plus one and a half is one of our best bets. Um, conversely, uh, Pittsburgh minus one and a half uh, is also a good bet. We'll talk about what plus one and a half plus and minus one and a half means in hockey uh, in a little bit. But Josh, what do you uh, use Odd Shopper for during the season? Because there's more to it than just simply the game lines. Yeah, so in our chat towards the end of the season, not only did we play a lot of DFS, we played we also had a lot of shot props, um, and I think that's one of the things um, that I used it a lot for for hockey wise. Anyway, um, you know, I like betting shot props, especially in the playoffs. Once the DFS contest kind of fizzled out, uh, betting shot or you look up a player um, and it you know say just like Nikita Kucherov is in a game against the Panthers and you look up his shot prop total and it's three and a half on DraftKings minus 143, something like that. But then you see on FanDuel uh, it's over four at plus 107. So like for like a fake half shot, you're paying extra. So you might as well go for the over four because four, four will be a push. You might as well get the plus money and hope he hits the shot bonus or not the shot bonus, the, the, the five shots, whatever. But I think, you know, shopping for props is one of my favorite things to do, but also with the, with the lines itself, I think, you know, you're, you're seeing, you know, odd shopper pump out. What are the best bets, the odds, the bets are going to hit. You can do all sorts of things with odd shopper. And if you, if you haven't checked it out, I seriously think you should just, even in the preseason, go check it out, go mess around on the site. There, it's up for every sport, but like for hockey with these, Preseason games, you can load in like parlays if you wanted to see like, it's just, you could do so much on there. It's such a valuable tool when I bet. 
Yeah, I, I agree, especially when it comes to props, because a lot of them, you know, it's not, you know, minus 110, minus 110 on either side or, or something like that. Usually you're looking at it, like you said, a minus 140 or a minus 150. So, you know, getting a minus 141 instead of a minus 154 on different prop sites, you know, in the long term can really affect a lot. So, yeah, be sure to head on over to oddshopper.com. Be sure to sign up. Uh, and really make use of it, not only for NHL, but of course, uh, MLB, NBA, NFL, uh, what have you. But be sure to check out oddshopper.com. Um, closing line value, that's not just specific to the NHL, but it's something that's important to every sport, uh, no matter what you're betting. Why don't you explain to the people what closing line value is and why it's important? Yeah, so I write up uh, an MMA article, as long as the UFC is fighting on Saturdays, for Odd Shopper. And something I like to do, obviously, I write the, the article either today or Wednesday, depending on the card, just because the props don't come out early. But when they when they do come out, you want to get them in as early as possible. Say you, you we'll, we'll, we'll just go back to hockey for an example. Say you find a prop that you like at plus 200, like 10 hours before puck drop. But then, you know, that's the opening line on it. And then it moves all the way to plus 100 at, at the game. So it moved from plus 200 to plus 100. So on that opening line for every dollar you bet, you're going to win $2. But because it moves so much, if you wait until puck drop for every dollar you bet, you're only going to win a dollar. So uh, you you beat the line by a dollar there. And I guess that's what closing line value is. Uh, we see that a lot um, with – it's a way we pick goalies sometimes in DFS. You see a lot of reverse line movement, this and that. But like – if you find a line that you like, I think you should jump on it early because chances are, uh, if you like a line, so do other people, and it's going to move, and you're going to you're going to lose value on it. Yeah, exactly. It, it's important to get. You know, you can't always get the best number that's available, but always try to get the best number you can. And and we're going to talk about uh, ways to try to do that in a little bit. But certainly, if you're constantly uh, beating the closing line value, even if you go through a little bit of downswing, I think you should have confidence that you'll eventually dig yourself out of it. So, you know, just be sure to track where you bet uh, a, a certain line and then where it ends up and see uh, how far off you are. And if you're constantly um, losing closing line value, that's probably not a good sign. Uh, but if you're accumulating it, you know, over a, a two, three, four week span, you should definitely feel good about your chances moving forward. We do have a special promo available uh, for anybody that is interested in sports betting and you're a new user to either the DraftKings Sportsbook or BetMGM. And you should go and claim it right now. All you have to do is bet at least $5 on any NFL pregame money line game on DraftKings and you'll get $200 in free bets if it wins. Over on BetMGM, uh, you must be located in the states of Kansas, Illinois, Louisiana, but all you have to do is just bet ten dollars on NF on any NFL pregame money line, and you will win two hundred dollars if either team scores a touchdown in Week Three. It's that easy. Just click the links in the video description below uh, to claim these offers now. Um, yeah, let's talk about early lines. Uh, you know, certainly uh, closing line value uh, is important to early lines. You'll see lines uh, in the NHL get posted often the night before. Um, sometimes you won't see a game posted. Maybe there's a, an injury that somebody's waiting on. You know, if Andre Vasilevsky uh, maybe tweaks something in a practice and they're not sure he's going to play, maybe you'll see uh, some books hold on uh, posting a line. But you'll get most lines for a game the night before, certainly the morning of. Um, what are some things you look for uh, when you're looking at early lines and what uh, maybe you're looking for early information. What are some things that are important to you when you're making a bet? Well, the first thing that's important to me is make sure I'm not on tilt from DFS because <laughs> then I'll just go like rage bet. But if you're having a, a decent night or a not terrible night in DFS and you want to get a head start on the on the next day's lines, I think one of the things that you look for, I always look at the schedule. I always like to attack teams going back to back on the road. So if I know a team's going into like, a tough situation and I don't want the line to move drastically. Yeah. Maybe the opening line's not great, um, but it's going to be better than it is at, it's going to be better at 10 PM Eastern than it is going to be the next day at like noon, knowing that the team's back to back on the road. They're not a great team, this and that. So I look for that. Uh, and with that, I think you can kind of guess, at least take an educated, 
educated guess on who the goalies are going to be in that game. So if you if you like a matchup there, you can do that. Um, I think that kind of goes into the next thing we're going to talk about is goalie confirmations. But if you can take an educated guess on what the goalies are going to be, I think that's going to help in the in the early lines as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you'll see some betters wait for goalie confirmations because there is a, a difference in the long term between most starting goalies and most of the backups. Certainly not all cases, but we'll talk about Andre Vasilevsky again. Uh, certainly one of the top goalies in the NHL, plays for Tampa Bay. His backup is Brian Elliott. Brian Elliott is certainly not one of the top goalies in the NHL. Uh, maybe it's a back-to-back situation. You don't know which game they're going to play. Like I said, maybe Vasilevsky kind of tweaks something in a practice and they're still waiting to confirm whether he's going to play or not. If you can, if you have a good feeling or if you've been following along, you can con- can kind of figure out which goalie is going to get confirmed. You can certainly get yourself a good line because once that goalie is confirmed, that's when the rest of the betters are going to jump onto it. Uh, and it'll certainly drag that line either one way or another. But one thing I would uh, kind of caution um, is that no single player is really worth like a gigantic amount, right? Like I think the absolute elite skaters, like we're talking the Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews level, you're looking at maybe like six, 7% at the absolute most impact in a certain game. Uh, so if you have, you know, if, if you have a team at 60% to win and Austin Matthews is out and all of a sudden, you know, the market's down to like 46% to win, it probably indicates to you that there's an overcorrection. So just keep in mind that, yes, individual player injuries certainly do matter. And if there are a few of them, those can pile up. Uh, but no player is worth like, you know, 80 cents or something like that uh, when you're looking at a betting line. So just uh, be sure to keep that in mind. And there are different bets you can make when you're talking about the side of a game. Uh, there's OT included, uh, which means it doesn't matter whether the game goes to overtime or not. Um, you know, if they win in a shootout, you still win your bet. There is regulation, which means the game has to finish in regulation uh, in order for you to win your bet. So they have to win before the 60 minutes is up. If it goes to overtime, you automatically lose. And then there's the puck line, which we talked about briefly earlier. Uh, teams either have to win by two or lose by uh, one or win the game. So plus one and a half, you can lose by one, lose in an overtime or shootout or a close game. Uh, you still win your bet. Um I don't know where uh, you uh, kind of fall on this. I know I don't really bet a lot of puck line. Uh, even like the absolute elite teams, only two thirds of their win, their wins. I think Edmonton had two thirds of their wins come by two or more goals. Um, you know, even the good teams are around 50, 55 percent. Certainly the worst team, uh, the let's say less uh, offensive teams, um, even further down. I usually just bet the sides, uh, OT included. I don't really mess around with regulation. There are a lot of, you know, teams anywhere from one and four to one and six games go to overtime. So I think you're really trying to uh, thread a needle here uh, by giving yourself too many restrictions. Where do you fall on the OT included or regulation or puck line debate? Yeah, I agree with you on the puck line just for this situation, empty net situations. If you if you have a plus one and a half and the team – is down or yeah down by one they're pulling the goalie you're gonna light your hair on fire watching the last like three minutes of that game and it's the exact inverse like you're up by one empty net situation you know it, it's just like if i know you're gonna get better numbers like colorado going into say chicago this year minus one and a half like their money line is gonna be like minus 500 but if you get the minus one and a half it might be like 285 but still like i try to stay away away from it just because what is minus 285 going to do for you really you have to bet 285 dollars to win 100 so in that scenario like i just probably avoid massive favorites unless i'm using them as a parlay builder but parlays are dangerous in its own right i think what i would bet in those massive favorite games are maybe like abs and regulation you might get a decent number there, but um, for me, like I'm kind of on the same train as you. I just like betting the money lines as long as it's not inflated one, like to a massive favorite. Yeah. I, I would say one of the instances where I would use a puck line, like you said, Colorado playing Chicago, maybe you can get a, a you'll certainly get a better number, but you know, I'm not taking the puck line national going into Dallas or something like that. You know what I mean? I completely agree with you there. Um, 
But there is more to the NHL than just betting sides. There are also props and over-under bets. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of over-under bets, uh, but you and I are certainly uh, interested in prop betting. And we do have a tool over at Stochastic under our DFS section, the Stochastic NHL Shot and Goal Prop Betting betting tool. It will help you uh, kind of discern with props uh, to take for shots on goal or for goals or what have you. Do you have a preference uh, between shots and goals? Is there one that you tend to avoid? What's your approach here? I'm a big shot prop better. Uh, goals are fine. Uh, it, that's kind of matchup dependent for me. Like I try to find power play guys and I'll bet the goal props there. Like I'm not going to bet like, like Brett Howden to score a goal. You know what I mean? Like I'm not just because I'm getting like plus 900. Yeah. I want to find like, like a, a guy on the power play who isn't like the biggest name on the power play, but he gets minutes and he's on the power play. That's where I'd exploit that for me. It's just shot props. Uh, mostly, uh, usually the opening lines, if you're paying attention early, can be heavily taken advantage of. You have to be around Odd Chopper, have that loaded up in the mornings. You can get really good closing line movement there. Yeah, I agree. And just to reiter reiterate the closing line movement, um, hot and cold streaks, you're going to go through them through an NHL season. You'll have a three-week stretch where it seems like uh, you win every bet, and then you can go a month where it seems like you can't hit. Um I think we all go through that. Like we mentioned earlier, the closing line value is something that you should be keeping track of. And if you're on the right side of that, uh, you should really uh, be fine in the long term. But is there any special tips out there for people that might be just getting into betting, um, you know, to kind of handle those streaks? Yeah, I mean, you just can't. It's easier said than done, but like you can't get emotional about it because it like you just have to. Do your diligence, get the best lines you can, trust your instincts and try not to do it, do anything emotional just because, you know, when you start getting emotional about betting, you're going to make mistakes. So um, if you have questions, hop in our you know chat. We have a DFS one. We have a betting one. We talk betting in DFS. So like there's there's tons of people who bet. So, you know, you get sometimes you get a little group think, which is another conversation, but you know, there's always like there, there's always someone who know who has a different opinion on things. And it's, it's nice to get a fresh set of eyes on it. Yeah, I, I think that's something that certainly can help, you know, people that you trust, people that you like talking it through with. I would also say, you know, same thing in DFS is that if it's really, really getting to you taking a weekend off, there's nothing wrong with that getting away from the game a little bit. But like for the third time, like we said, if, if you're on the right side of the closing line value battle, uh, you should be fine in the long term all right that'll do it for us and this how to bet the nhl preview podcast uh don't forget to check out odd shopper uh we showed it at the top of the show um it is a very good tool for comparing across sports books to make sure that you can get the best line and number possible so you can make us the most money that you can we will be back next week we're going to have uh, double dip shows we're going to do how to run fantasy cruncher with, uh, for dfs we're also going to do a how to play DFS as well. So be sure to check back on this channel. Please like and subscribe uh, the video on this channel. As mentioned earlier, this that really does help us. We are out of here, Josh. So for our single entry assassin, Mr. Joshua Harris, I am Michael Clifford, aka Slim Cliffy, saying good luck on your bets this season, everybody. <laughs>